Liberty TV, voice for all, vision for all. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on Beyond the Headlines, a program where we look at uh, trending headlines on our national dailies. My name is Shafiu Suleiman and on the platform uh, I'll be joined by uh, my colleagues talking about uh, senior correspondents uh, who together will be looking at some of the major headlines, uh, giving them uh, journalistic uh, perspectives or um, analyzing them from the background of a journalistic um, point of view. Now, we have uh, some major, I mean, national dailies uh, with us here. Uh, we'll be looking at the, what they contain in terms of the, the major headlines and then do a little bit of uh, analysis on some of the, the topical issues. Um, I'm joined by um, Godwin Damunde. Uh, Godwin Naumunde is a senior correspondent, uh, political correspondent. Uh, he will also be joined by uh, Phoebe Kure. Um, she is also one of our senior correspondents. Uh, together, we'll be looking at the issues. Uh, she will be uh, in the studio uh, in a short while. But before she um, comes in, um, we'll go straight to business. Uh, on the Nation newspaper of today, there's a major headline. Uh, which says Shiites, their IGP Adamu on planned procession. Shiites, their IGP Adamu on planned procession. Now, two writers, uh, one is saying government shouldn't attack us, and then the second one is saying police, I'm and remains banned. Well, from the headline, you know, there, are, there is a potential conflict uh, in the opening, and um, looking at some of the reports we're getting, um, perhaps there, there could be clashes here and there uh, between security operatives and members of this proscribed uh, group. Um, um, let's look at this, uh, Amundi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ashura procession is one procession that um, uh, is yearly, you know, it's an yearly event that this uh, group usually holds. Uh, but this time around, the police acting on um, uh, the proscribed order now, uh, saying that uh, they're going to treat uh, the processions uh, not with levity now. They, they, they want to, uh, they insist, if you like, that uh, Ayman remains banned. Um, let's look at the two sides of the coin. <coughs> uh, the group members daring security operatives mm -hmm. saying they will go on with their procession despite the fact that uh, they are considered banned in Nigeria. Uh, what do you make up of that uh, defiance? Uh, it is, well, uh, I think uh, when you dare uh, a security agency uh, operatives, uh, it's, it's not really a good one. Mm. But. Uh, we all have the freedom uh, to carry out our activities or mm. any religious activities uh, mm. legitimately. Yeah. But when it tramples on the fundamental uh, rights of others, mm. uh, that's where it becomes an issue. Uh, let us uh, go back to where all this started. Mm. Uh, way back sometime, I mean, a few uh, years ago when it started, uh, uh, when uh, Boratai was on his way to Zaria also, mm. and then um, these uh, protesters, I mean, these uh, uh, shield members. members were actually carrying out their activities along the road, mm -hmm. like the story we're told about. And um, 
uh, you see, when you carry out your activities, one, we must understand that you must not mm. trample on others' fundamental human rights. If mm. uh, your actions are carried out mm. uh, the way it should be, then mm. I think there should be no problem. But when you begin to carry out activities mm. when, uh, to disrupt mm. the activities of others or to disrupt uh, what Nigerians intend to do on that very particular day, it becomes a challenge. I think uh, the government uh, will need to sit down with this group and then see how they can provide solutions to mm -hmm. ending this kind of uh, uh, regular clashes because uh, this is becoming an event too many and it's not very palatable. I, I tell you, before I got to town this morning, I went through mm -hmm. a lot of uh, uh, challenges uh, trying to scale through to the town uh, mm. because of uh, uh, the blockage, uh, mm. uh, uh, roadblocks mm. mounted by uh, security agencies because of this uh, mm. young man. But unfortunately, these mm. same guys still find their way to, the, to town. Mm. So it's, it's very unfortunate that these things are happening. I think yeah. uh, the security agencies will really need to see uh, how they can resolve this amicably so that we do not continue mm. in, in this kind of uh, uh, unfortunate uh, situation. Yeah, though the IMN, which is the Islamic movement in Nigeria, is currently um, challenging, if you like, that prescription order that was issued by, by the competent court of jurisdiction. Um, uh, coming out, you know, despite knowing that uh, there could be clashes, um, some would say it's also, uh, just like you said, it's daring. Mm. Uh, but the police, known for also its stance on the matter, said the IMM remain banned and uh, they're going to treat any action by them as a terrorist action or so. Now, we've seen, um, just had a reported clash between the two groups, the security operatives and the IMM members in Kaduna. The group alleged that uh, Three of its members were killed, but then the police, uh, in a reaction, said it was a lie. They called it a balatant lie. He said they only dispersed hoodlums. Now, uh, for anyone who knew the history of um, uh, these processions and, of course, the attitude of the IMN members uh, and also the way security operators um, handled the matter, especially in recent times, will tell you that, yes, things like this are expected. But uh, it is needless to also um, carry out actions that could lead to loss of lives. Uh, what do you make up with the, the um, response, you know, by the police? Oh, well, well uh, the, well, of, of course, uh, before now, uh, the warning has uh, already been sound, and uh, they've already uh, they've made it clear that, look, you, you, you do not come out to destruct activities of other Nigerians. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's why I said it's a very delicate issue uh, mm -hmm. because if the police continue the way uh, they've already, I mean, they've started, then we, we may begin to lose so many lives because these are young men, uh, permit me to say this, who do not even, uh, I'm sorry I have to use this word, who mm -hmm. do not even have values for their lives. And most times they just go out and say, look, we are, we, 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 this is what we believe on and we are ready to, to sacrifice our lives whatsoever. Mm. I have had the opportunity of uh, mm. talking to one or two persons, members of the shared group, and they made it clear to me that, look, we are ready to sacrifice our lives. And so mm. it becomes very difficult because a man who, is, who has already given up Mm. is ready to sacrifice his life, then what mm. else? And that's the challenge we are having mm. even with the Boko Haram set. These are mm. uh, individuals who have a, uh, who do not really value their lives. So it becomes very difficult for the security agencies to uh, arrest a such kind of situation. You are coming, you are attacking, and you don't value your lives. So mm. it's very, very unfortunate that these guys are daring the police. And honestly, I think, I think, in my own opinion, mm. that... Uh, uh, there should be a, uh, a concrete meeting. Mm. I don't really know how to go, how they go about this, but yeah. this problem has you to mean, stop. You mean there's need for a third party to to yes, win? Yes, yes. But that was the reason. What uh, that's what gave birth or what paved way uh, for the um, the federal government now to allow the leader of the group to, to uh, travel out of the country for medical attention, just like. Uh, um, I mean, some prominent Nigerians were set up intervene. Yes, but uh, what, it, what, 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 from what is coming uh, uh, out now is that this this matter is far from being resolved. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. it, it's, you see, like this, the, the the security 
have the, 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 the control mm -hmm. over what happens in the country when it has to do mm -hmm. with security. Okay, the security agencies, it is their responsibility mm -hmm. uh, to protect the lives and properties of Nigerians, mm -hmm. all right? And then uh, the Shirt group is like a man trying to fight against his own clan. It's not always uh, very, very easy because mm -hmm. you as an individual or a group cannot stand to fight against your own clan. So mm -hmm. uh, daring the police is like this group is coming to fight against a clan, mm -hmm. which is in this context now in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. All right. So the security agencies, of course, they have all the... the, 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 the well, yeah, and they have the mandate. They, they, have, the, they, have, they have the, the mandate. Country. Yes, they, they have the ability. They have the... Uh, yes, on how to tackle protest. some of this. Exactly. E exactly. Mm -hmm. So they should go back to the drawing board and then see how they can come together mm -hmm. with this uh, group and then resolve this issue once and for all. Because with the way we are looking at it, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think if it continues this way, then it's, it's mm -hmm. definitely not going to be palatable for any yeah, uh, uh, Nigerian. Yeah, uh, Looking at the, you know, your, your opening statements, of yes. course Nigerians have the right to demonstrate, they have yes. the right for, to, to associate yes, and all of abs that. Absolutely. Um, but then um, I think the, the, the thin line is when it becomes violent exactly. and certain things need to be done. Because the police is also in one of the stories saying that, uh, well, regarding the Ashura religious procession, yes. you know, that Muslims are free to hold procession, but IMM members are banned. You know, there has been this controversy or there has been this position that, okay, uh, it is not all Shiites that are violent. Uh, you know, there's a group of Shiites who do not share in uh, the violent confrontations yes, or yes. taking things, I mean, to taking uh, um, um, the whole matter into their own hands and so on. Yes. So th that, that, that means the police also uh, realize that, yes, there is need for people to exercise their rights definitely uh, for, for association or peaceful demonstration and, and so on yeah but um, looking at uh, I mean the, the position of law if, if a group is said to have been banned you know certainly there are certain measures that uh, security operatives will take uh, to ensure that activities of the, the group is, is curtailed we've seen how IPOB was banned and of course uh, since then, uh, the activities where, I mean, Nigerians are no more seeing them coming to, yes. uh, I mean, present that threat that uh, they, they used to do. Yes. Uh, so, but in this case, we're having a, a different issue. Mm. Yes, m maybe the government, maybe the mm. government, or rather the security agencies, mm. uh, have not really taken a proactive uh, step. Mm. Because just like you rightly mentioned, the IPOP, uh, when it happened, of course, we saw uh, how uh, the army, of course, deployed their troops to uh, the, the eastern part mm, of the, the country. And, and that guns. situation, and, uh, mm. of course, that situation was arrested. Mm. So maybe the government needs to be more proactive in mm. this case because we cannot continue this way. If the government say, look, this particular group is banned, I'm sure they have a reason, and the security mm. agencies too. Just like you rightly pointed out, mm. when you are you, you claim to, to be practicing your religion, and then you mm. are also inflicting pains on the citizens. I mm. think that's where it becomes a, a problem. Mm. Everyone has the right mm. to, to do what he or she wants to do, or a group, what you want to do, but it has to be mm. within the confines of the law. Yeah, is you it also to say the right that uh, perhaps the police are finding it a bit difficult I, I, now to address the problem because of the delicate nature? Exactly. Here, here you are dealing with a religious religion. Religion, exactly. And, and in know, the other case, you're dealing yes, with criminality, so, yes. agitation, and so and, and so that, on. That's where the challenge is, because in this part mm. of the world, mm. uh, religion is what we don't tell. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yes, it's one thing that we mm. don't uh, mm. wave or joke with. You right? don't joke with, mm. you know. It's just the two major uh, religions here in the country. We practice mm. two, mainly two major religions, Islam and Christianity. Mm. And so it's a very difficult task for the security agencies but all the same i think uh, there are ways in which they can go about it mm. all right they should know they should know and that is why they are uh, security personnel i'm sure they have the knowledge i'm sure they have the understanding i'm sure they have uh, the will you know on mm. how to tackle this kind of a problem and so mm. if you approach a particular way and it's not working out then you have to sit back and mm. see uh, take of uh, another alternative step where uh, such issues could be addressed. But we must not continue this way. Mm. This thing has to be nipped to the board. Mm. Uh, the security as, uh, agencies must really have to work out. And it, it, you must not keep shooting at all times.
tribes, mm. all right, because this thing is... Uh, yeah, there, there yeah. is a civil, perhaps, it, way it, to, it, to it, handle it. it, 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 it should, there shouldn't be maximum force. It, it, exactly, maximum mm. force. You mm. see, it shouldn't be. And if, if there is need for some to be arrested, of course, mm. like I, I said the other time, I, I, I listened to an interview with uh, one of the persons who claimed mm. to be the leaders of the group. Mm. I wouldn't want to mention the name of the radio now. And mm. he was on, on air, and he spoke. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then I was expecting that the security agencies would mm -hmm. go for it because according to this person in question, mm -hmm. he said he was the one that mobilizes this group mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So I was expecting the security agencies. Yes, 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 they could be. Yes. And I was expecting the security agencies to apprehend this man even before he he, he leaves. Yes, yes the, 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 the station. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. I, I, I think as I speak with you, the guy is still working free on the road. So mm -hmm. the people, the key players, the key players should be apprehended. Okay. The key players should oh, be apprehended. Okay. Now, um, um, yes, looking at... Um, but then some will tell you that uh, <coughs> since the incidents, yes. uh, the, the, the Indian incidents, where, you know, the return of the leader yes. after that failed, you know, um, medical uh, medical uh, uh, voyage to India. There is relative. There has been relative calm, especially here in Abuja. <laughs> yes. uh, you know, people have not been seeing the group coming out to protest, just yes. like uh, it used to happen. And of course, uh, Abuja residents are beginning to say bye bye to such days where they are scared, you know, to come out and all of that. Mm -hmm. But then uh, the processions also took place here in Abuja. Uh, there are sketchy details as to how it. Uh, happen or whether there are clashes or not yes. yeah but but did you think um that uh, what, what the government did in terms of uh, allowing the leader to go for the medical che check mm. must have you know doused the tension definitely mm. because b before now a, a lot of them were complaining that this man mm. uh his health was uh, deteriorating mm. he wasn't uh, doing well mm. and that if anything happened to the man they were not going to take it kindly with the federal mm. government. Mm. So for the government to have allowed him to travel to um, India. India for treatment, mm. I think that is one of the reasons why we are witnessing what we are seeing presently. Mm. But let me ask Except you... Except with the Ashura yes, exactly, yes, yes. Mm. But let me ask you, why is the government still keeping him in, in custody? Well, I think the matter is still in court, remember? He was just given uh, a leave to travel out for that medical uh, treatment. I think the, the substantive matter is still coming up at the, the, the trial court in Kaduna. Yes. Uh, so perhaps that's the reason why. It's still exactly. Held. Yes. Like if you ask mm. me my candid opinion, I think mm. I, will, I want them to hasten up this. Okay. Let them do something fast about it. Let us know mm. where where the end. You no. Know, let Let's get to know mm. how uh, what will come out of it. Mm. Because we cannot continue this way. Right. If it means releasing him, just like some. Uh, mm. uh, 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 um, People have been coming. Yes, it can be for. Then mm. let's re release him. And if he goes, he does anything otherwise. No, but he'll be yeah, rearrested. But you think re releasing him is the solution to the problem? Because, oh, of course, if, that's, if it is still but persistent, that, despite but, the fact that he is. But, but, that's, but that's what these mm. young men are agitating for. Mm. They want their leader released. Okay. So, in, uh, yes, mm. you could release. Let's, let's see. You release the guy. Mm. And if he comes mm. and then tries anything funny again, you get him rearrested. Well, okay. That's uh, the way I'm looking at it. Okay, this this one matter, um, several others that we can look at. Uh, the leadership is coming up with this headline. It says, PMB orders evacuation of Nigerians from South Africa. Mm. Um, you know, there's still the issue of the xenophobic attacks mm. is still reverberating. Uh, now, um, despite the several interventions or the several measures being taken, you know, the, the diplomatic measures, the economic measures, the political measures and all of that. But the killing persists. Um, day before yesterday, there was a, a report of uh, an incident where one um, a Nigerian was killed and several others wounded. Now the government is focusing, you know, more on this evacuation issue. Uh, about 640 Nigerians were said to be ready to return home. Uh, and then uh, ASU, uh, in one of the... Um, the riders saying xenophobia should spur uh, us as a nation to reposition. Mm. Now, we'll look at all of that, uh, but I think uh, that has to do, and that has to come up after this uh, short break. Uh, so in case you're just joining us, it's beyond the headlines, and we're looking at the issues beyond the headlines. Please stay with us.
gymnastic? Just name it. I love sports. Yes! 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 I am a woman. I deserve to be seen, heard, and be happy. <laughs> In future, I love cartoons. And in future, I love education. That's why I'm here. 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 i and to achieve this, I do it with no other than liberty team. And in future, I am liberty. Liberty TV, voice for all, vision for all. Thank you for staying with us it's still uh, beyond the headlines and we're looking at issues beyond the headlines here on uh, Liberty uh, television platform and uh, before we went on the break uh, we we looked at the issue of the Ironman and of course the daring processions despite police uh, ban or despite uh, uh, the ban if you like uh, of the activities of the group uh, and then I earlier want to introduce to you uh, Phoebe Kuri, one of our senior correspondents, but then due to exigencies of our operations, he might not be able to uh, be on, uh, on the platform, but uh, uh, Anthony Momodu is just coming in, you know, uh, to help, uh, I mean, to participate in analyzing the issues. Uh, Tony, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Yes, uh, just, um, I also introduced that we're going to look at the next paper, which is the leadership newspaper of today. And the major headline is PMB orders evacuation of Nigerians from South Africa. There are two riders. One is saying 640 are ready to return home. That is tomorrow. Um, then the second one is saying Sanaphobia as part to reposition the nation as so. So we'll be looking at this. Um, let me start by getting your opinion. You know, the government has already muted this idea, or rather um, has um, made the offer that uh, Nigerians who are ready to come back home uh, due to the intense, you know, attacks, um, I, I mean, should, should, should get ready, you know, to, to board the, the, the flight that are it's going to be on. available, yeah, for them. Now, uh, the order is coming from PMB now. Uh, how do you look at it? Because some would say, okay, the fact that uh, despite all measures that have been taken and the president is saying evacuate Nigerians, it means perhaps we're not seeing the, des the results. I don't know how you're looking at it. Yeah, it's, uh, first of all, we want to thank the president for sending the special envoy uh, mm. to South Africa mm. and also the recall of uh, Kabiru Bala. Mm. Obviously, it meant the presidency wasn't satisfied with the work he has done so far. Mm. And... Uh, Despite the assurances from the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, mm -hmm. that all was well and everything was intact, mm -hmm. uh, the fact that the President thought it wise that Nigerians should be evacuated, mm -hmm. and it means that uh, there's more than we can that? see. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably the envoy and the mm -hmm. information getting back to him mm -hmm. uh, is very worrisome, and that's why they've made arrangements for Nigerians. And we report we've gotten 614 Nigerians. Uh, ready to come back home. Mm. Uh, we know Nigerians are very resilient. Uh, before 640 Nigerians decide to come back home, mm. obviously it means that uh, it's mm. very, very critical. Yes. yes. And uh, I think uh, it it's goes to the second rider, like you said, xenophobia. Yeah, and it's just part, you know, yes, for, for to, to reposition. Yeah. I think that has been the call of most Nigerians that it's time for Nigeria to change our mm. foreign policy uh, mm. from making Africa the center, center. piece of our, mm. our foreign policy to Nigeria mm. first, Nigeria second, Nigeria third, and yeah. if possible fourth and fifth. Uh, so but is it a possibility yeah, looking at the historical perspective and what Nigeria means to the entire African continent? I, I think it's time for 
for us to uh, drop that toga of Big Brother Africa uh, because you look at the United mm. States of America, that was the role U.S. played for the world. But uh, mm. Trump came in and said it's now time for America first. So it is not out of place to, yes, to, to, yes. To, to change the gear. To <laughs> change the narrative. We have to do that because uh, South mm. Africa, uh, the xenophobic killings mm. repeatedly uh, against all odds shows that uh, the African continent is not appreciating uh, the sacrifice Nigeria has been making thus far. Mm. You look at the statement coming from the AU, mm. uh, the AU commissioner, what, what she he said was the fact that he was impressed with the mm. arrests made by South Africa, not mm. the prosecution of the culprits. Mm. So it tells that the AU mm. is like what is being said. Uh, it keeps backing but never bites. Mm. And as long as the AU cannot bite, cannot sanction South Africa, I think it's left for Nigeria to take the necessary steps. And I, I think if it means us evacuating Nigerians <coughs> from South Africa and mm. repositioning our foreign policy, I think that will be spot on. And I think that's the move I support. Oh, okay, uh, Mr. Amunde, uh, uh, looking at this, um, um, I mean, degenerating, if you like, um, scenario, degenerating political, uh, I mean, uh, degenerating political, uh, um, diplomatic um, um, relations, um, and then looking at what is also coming up, uh, coming out of um, the South African uh, government, um, we're yet to hear, um, you know, any concrete response. Uh, instead, uh, what we're hearing is that, uh, in fact, xenophobia is not a crime in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So, um, is it to say that uh, the, the response is also? Uh, I mean, getting Nigeria to, I mean, making Nigeria to take some, some of those decisions now, returning Nigerians from, from that country. Exactly. Uh, just like uh, rightly said that action mm -hmm. uh, speaks louder than voice. Uh, there is, um, it's clear that uh, Ni uh, South Africans no longer need Nigeria in their own country. Uh, Do they really not need Nigerians? Because Nigerians are also adding value to the economy. They are value to... But looking at, but looking at mm. the way they are treating them, mm. You see, the way they are treating them clearly shows that Nigerians are no longer needed in South Africa. There's no two ways about it. This, I mean, situation has been on for a very long time. Mm. It didn't just start today, all right? And then our government too, because most times when I tell them, I say, look, it's because our government mm. failed to take proactive step from the outset mm. when this thing started. Yeah. And that is why we have gotten to this level where we are today. And so, mm. the way it is, it clearly tells us that South Africa no longer needs Nigerians mm. in their own country. But you see, I don't have problem, I don't have any problem with the federal government mm. uh, trying to evacuate mm. Nigerians from South Africa back to the country. Mm. But my challenge is, if 640 Nigerians get back to the country, mm. what would they plan be or what plans have they been what plans on ground the government to accommodate have them or to um, you understand to make them you know yes. have also confidence in the system here. exactly and here we have a security security challenge on our hands that we have not been able to resolve mm. now we're bringing in 640 nigerians into the country mm. now you must also know even though that someone said this is just a, a fraction exactly yes looking fraction. Looking at exactly <laughs> now you must also mm. know that these mm. young men mm. and women were probably working in South Africa. They had businesses on in South Africa. Mm. Now, also, what actually made them leave the country in the first mm. place? To seek mm. for greener pastures elsewhere. Mm. Now you are bringing them back to the country. So, yeah, I think yeah, this, this yeah, is yeah, where the challenge is. is. Yeah, that's that. my worry. Okay, so, so right. uh, you uh, want uh, to respond to that? Speaking from where he stopped, in as much as I agree, something made them leave Nigeria for greener pastures and they had businesses there that were destroyed. I think. This is where the issue of compensation mm. for Nigerian victims comes yeah. into play. This yeah. is why Yesterday Nigeria we heard about has the, the $10 billion dollar yes. uh, and compensation that has been muted. The federal government said they are not willing to pay. Uh, that's, mm. This is where I think uh, the president has to show that he's indeed uh, Nigeria's, president of Africa. Mm. the president of Africa. And Nigeria is mm. indeed a major player in African yes. politics and world politics. Mm. This is where we are going to show the muscle we've got as, as the, one of the biggest black nation in the world. Uh, I don't think there's nothing that stops Nigeria from pushing the AU, mm. twist, um, twisting them if possible, mm. to ensure that yeah. South Africa uh, compensates. Some, some, someone said, you know, the fact that Nigeria is also a major financier, mm. you know, of the African Union yeah, and yes. so on. 
Uh, but, but well, these are diplomatic issues. Um, all options are not uh, closed. Closed. Yeah. closed. Yeah, government is looking at available options. Options. Um, th they've taken the necessary diplomatic uh, measures uh, that some say are not still yielding the desired result. But we can we cannot also under undermine the fact that uh, the relationship between these two countries is the bond is beyond what we're just seeing in terms of this i think uh, for me i think yeah. we, we we sorry to use this word but mm. i think we're living mm. in illusion when we say there's a bond between Nigeria and south africa mm. okay. because clearly south africans mm. uh to a very large extent mean business do not yes they mean business and they mm. do not like nigeria they're always in competition with nigeria even mm. in the world of sports mm. uh, they're always i always digging yeah, into the what it has to do with nigeria yeah. and so bringing it to the other side in terms of politics there's mm. always this mm. issue when nigeria was declared at the point as uh, the uh, m the most thriving economy in africa yeah. uh, there was this but talk about South Africa, Africa saying no, mm. South Africa is the yes, biggest. Exactly. Yeah. So mm. there's always this so, so that between every, both countries. Yes. So. But it's healthy when we're talking about economy, for instance. Uh, you well, know, except healthy, when it becomes an healthy, issue. But, uh, mm. In terms of this xenophobic attack, yes. uh, we must admit that the government of South Africa also played a major role in selling this. Uh, yeah, they're changing their narratives. The yeah. So there are people that Nigerians have come to take over their jobs mm -hmm. and all that. And that was major players, their politicians mm -hmm. did that. And mm -hmm. this is what we're suffering. So I, I think I still stand that mm -hmm. the AU, the ECOWAS mm -hmm. should, as a matter of uh, sanction South Africa to an extent. Let's let's see them do something because if they stay mm. mute, then it's uh, it's as good as and, uh, uh, what's more like an good. endorsement. Yeah, it's an endorsement <laughs> technically. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, I think we have to leave that and then go we'll go to the next um, headline. And the Daily Trust is concerned about um, food security. It's concerned about what is happening at the borders. The closure of the borders is, is raising concerns. Now the headline is prices of food items, others rise as borders remain shut. Now, there is a rider. Closure has produced petrol smuggling, mm. says NMPC. There are, this, are, this is two sides to the coin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, prices of food items, others have risen as a result of the closure of the borders. Well, government felt there is need to secure, I mean, to close the borders. Uh, I think this one has to do with the security exercise that is being conducted yes, along yes. the borders. Yes. Before now, we had an issue of the closure of the semi border due to, um, I mean, uh, with, with government's intention now to uh, reduce or to stop smuggling of rice into the country and um, so that local production could have some lifeline. Um, is, it, is it the right time for us to shut down the border when we're battling with uh, food sufficiency? I, I think it's the perfect time uh, because uh, mm. we're talking about security issues, we're talking about insurgency, banditry, mm. all at the same time kidnapping. So, mm. And I think uh, shutting down of the border mm. is long overdue. And it also is an indictment on the part of uh, the immigration mm. service because if they were actually doing their jobs 10 mm. years ago, mm. uh, it, it, we wouldn't have been suffering this infiltration mm. into the country by uh, bandits and other non-Nigerians. Mm. Then in terms of uh, food items, uh, being on the rise, I, I think it's for me technically it's laughable mm -hmm. because if you look at it, uh, if we're the biggest uh, con uh, a country, a, a food uh, basket, a food of yes, we should be able to be self sufficient to feed ourselves to an yeah. extent. So, so this also so, shows that so uh, our, our much talked about sufficiency, it's a, it's a, yeah, 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 yeah. yes. Then also, at the same time, mm. I think it's, it's better that the rise in food prices, mm. it means farmers are going to go back to the farms. Mm. It means the government is going to now see the true effect of this head, headsman farmers, farmers clash. clashes. Yeah. Well, beyond the headsman and farmers clashes, yeah. remember, even this, the farmers could not go to farms because of this rising kidnapping and all yes. of that, especially in the food bag basket yes. states, yes. so to yes. speak. Yes. Now, the northwestern state is largely agrarian, yes. Zamfara, as a farmer's uh, as, as, I mean, I mean state yes. and all of that. But activities of farmers has been drastically reduced, reduced because yes. of this uh, kidnappings that are taking place. Mm -hmm. And here we are closing the borders. Are we also not mindful of the fact that we're impoverishing Nigerians? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You see, most times we talk about closing mm -hmm. the border, yet we still find mm -hmm. goods coming into the country. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's where my challenge is. Mm -hmm. Now, the, our borders mm -hmm. remains one of the most Porous borders, right? 
all over the world. Mm. Have People many, coming many out many of Ex uh, routes. E e exactly. Into the so country. most times when we say we close the border, we mm. only make the boys at the border richer. Yes. Because most of these things mm. still come into the country. Yeah, but in this case, what, what, what the story is saying yes. is that there is decline in the activities of people, uh, communities around the borders, yes. because this is where the transactions are actually taking place. Now, um, communities around the borders uh, are now finding it difficult, you know, to access food. Yes. And that is that will give out the rise yes. in, in terms of prices. At, at, yes, here mm. the government has to look at Mm. how to address the issue of insecurity, just mm. like you rightly pointed out. Mm. Because most of these farmers mm. have been driven away from their farms mm. due to insurgency activities of banditry and all that. Mm. So if we must mm. feed ourselves as a nation, mm. then the security aspect of it has to be tackled. The okay. government has to do something yeah. to tackle this. Uh, okay, yeah, since, since you have a, no, no, yes, uh, because, uh, a slight different idea. No, 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 I, I, I'm totally in line with what he's saying, but right. I, I also want to draw attention to the fact that uh, mm -hmm. when we say, like this moment we talked about uh, fake news and the ability of some people to want to sponsor certain kind of news to be on the front page. Right. If you look at the issue of food prices and items and closure of border, mm -hmm. you will not take away the fact that certain people who benefit from the opening of the border mm. would want to make such mm. uh, news say yes. even when the food prices yeah, have, uh, might so not have risen. Yeah. Perhaps so, yes. doing that to, yeah, to, 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 to make government, the government to, to change to, the policy. To, to change the yeah, policy. but you talk about the, 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 the fact that security should have a prime place in, yes. our, yes. Uh, in our agenda. Yes. And then shutting down the borders to enhance the security yeah. situation. Mm -hmm. It's not something that the government would negotiate. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but let's look at the other side of it. Yes. The NMPC is saying the closure has reduced petrol smuggling. You know, this has been a, a recurring issue. Yes. Um, looking at the, the, the porous borders, you know, there has been a lot of concerns as to how, I mean, that is aiding the smuggling of uh, finished uh, refined yes. petroleum products to other African countries. And that is, has been also putting the country on the edge. Stolen products, not even those that are. People are stealing this product and and then smuggling it out of out of, out of the. So what, what do you make up with the NMPC's uh, <laughs> uh, response to this? Uh, it is you know this, this is not the first time we yeah. get uh, stories like this in the past, mm. and um, I keep saying it. I said, look, if the government, if mm. the security agencies know what to do mm. and they go about doing it the right way. Mm. then such uh, stories won't even come in the first place. Yeah, right? smuggling of, it's uh, smuggling of fuel and all that uh, mm. pr uh, petroleum uh, products. Mm. Uh, it, it shouldn't, it shouldn't. Yeah, it shouldn't, some say it it is, it is, that, that is happening because the dispar of the disparity in terms of price. It, you know, uh, petrol marketers could come into the country, okay. buy it, you know, at a lesser price. Okay. And then but this has as soon as they, sh they, they get out of the shores of Nigeria, they almost double the price. This has always been the case. Mm. It has always been the case. It didn't just start today. Mm. All so, right? so. And that, it boils down to mm. how porous our borders are. Mm. And it boils down to the will mm. by the federal government mm. or the security agencies to tackle some of these mm. uh, activities yeah. around so, the So how do, we just, how do we reconcile yeah. the issues? Okay. On, the, on one hand, uh, people are, are saying that they are getting impoverished. Mm. Uh, the, 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 the rise in food items, uh, prices of food items is putting them on the edge. And the other uh, uh, hand, NMPC is saying, yes, yes, we are seeing the benefit of the closure. <laughs> I, I think for NMPC, yes. it's also an, an indictment on their own part. Yes. Because, uh, they they yeah. have agencies, specific DPR, yeah. uh, who are supposed to monitor, to regulate. To regulate monitor. I mean, so mm. There was this issue of saying, okay, mm. let there be trackers on the trucks that carry this petroleum product. So that mm. wherever they pass the point where they're supposed to drop their products, mm. we can know that smuggling is about to take place, then the security mm. agencies are alerted. But what happened to those yeah. procedures, those measures put mm. in place? Does it, it indirectly, it means the NMPC has no other measures to mm. tackle the smuggling aside mm. uh, the borders, the, those yeah. are the borders. So yeah, the checkpoints at the border. The yes. think, okay, so, so yes. this is to open, um, I mean, this is just like I said, might be an indictment on the part. Yes. Yes. It yes. shows their failure yes. to, to initially so, track, you know, well, the, the movements of those you see, you, 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 you see, the, mm. the, 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 the problem is not, mm. uh, I think they know what to do. 
Yeah. The, who, who are you talking about now? The, 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 uh, the NMPC? Uh, NMPC, yes. Yeah. They know how to do. Yeah. They know what to do. Mm -hmm. The Department of Petroleum Resources, just like you say, regulating yeah. uh, body of... Yeah. They, they, they know monitoring. what to do, yes. Mm -hmm. So if you are, if they are ready to, uh, to track down this, mm -hmm. this uh, uh, field that is going out of the country, mm -hmm. they will do the right thing. They, I mean, definitely they were... They were mm -hmm. So, so they, shouldn't, they shouldn't rely on the closure of the border uh, to... <laughs> to well, no, that's the problem. it's not going to be permanently. Yeah. Uh, but technically, if, if we're going to make that permanent, then there should be a time frame yeah. uh, so that, uh, uh, like you said, the boys at the borders mm. don't begin to benefit from, yeah, from, yeah, from the closure. closure. Okay. Uh, so I think it's, it's something that has to have a timeline, mm. a time frame and measures put in place. Well, now coming back to the, the main issue, because the closure of the borders was done, you know, to intensify security okay, surveillance yeah. along that axis. Yes, agreed, um, this cross-border crimes are aided by the porous nature of our yeah, borders. Yes. And of course, the current, the ongoing, if you like, um, um, uh, intervention by, I mean, the Sahel countries, you know, our neighbors now. The lecture basin. The lecture basin, yes. okay. the, 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 the joint, you know, operations that are taking place. Um, how do you think this would help you know, especially the issue of proliferation of arms oh, so. into the country, because that is what is fueling the crimes, you know, the level of crimes we are seeing in the country. Yeah. I think I'm a little bit uh, disappointed with uh, the momentum. Initially, there was this very high momentum mm. when the president visited uh, Chad, Niger, Cameroon, and neighboring countries, mm. and that led to the Joint Tax Force, mm. especially uh, the fight against Boko Haram around the Lake Chad Basin, because mm. we had a drought in mm. the Lake the, yeah. the Chad Basin, which mm. was said to be one of the issues that yeah, led to part of the, yeah. the, the, the impact, the impact, negative impact, impact. of the but insurgency. Once the president's mm. uh, inter interaction, intervention with other neighboring uh, head of states mm. doing the, we, we noticed that this, uh, the, uh, the joint military task force, we mm. heard less about them, uh, unlike before where, okay, mm. we know from time to time, mm. we noticed the chief of army staff always had vis visiting, mm. uh, you, know, um, you know, coming to mm. give updates and give us heads up as regards the, the, the job done so far within the like, chat base. But recently, mm. that's, uh, that's forced, that measure mm. just died down. So I, I, I think there's need for the president, probably, because mm. uh, most times we hear is when the president says he gives them directives, that's when they become very active. So probably he needs to wake them up from okay. the slumber, probably, so that they begin to see that uh, the effect is beginning to wear. Yeah into the country and yeah. not just within the like, Yeah, but, but, but then, uh, Amunde, closing the land borders, some would say, will only affect a fraction, you know, or a section of the country. Because smuggling is still taking place uh, through the, the water, yeah. you know, the smuggling of even the rice we're talking about is also taking place there. Um, even though substantially the customs service um, is able, in most cases, to track, because this, um, I mean, cannot easily find their way into the country, just like they do with the land borders. There has been a lot of controversy as to um, each time there's closure <coughs> of borders, the economy of particularly the north, so to speak, is affected. We've heard about the cries of the communities around the, 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 the borders that were shut. Um, what's your take on that? <laughs> well, it's, 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 it's just like I'll, I'll keep saying it, I'll keep mm. saying it. You mm. see, mm. when we all decide to do the right thing, Mm. We'll get the right results. Okay. I've said it, the mm. borders are porous. Mm. And until the Nigerian government and the security agencies mm. decide to do the right thing, mm. we may uh, not really yeah. find The reason why I ask you that question, if you look at, if you look at the, when, when there is this um, talk about around the importation of uh, used cars, mm. used vehicles, mm. yes. you know, uh, the, the borders uh, at the dry, I mean, the, the the port. I, I, I mean, the, the borders along the... the um, Costa Rica lines? Yeah, along the... What do you call it now? In the borders, let's say, for instance, in Katana, in GB, okay. I mean, in, in KB and all okay, this. Okay, you yeah, know, the northern uh, exactly. Yes, so, yeah. so, so okay. the smugglers are finding it extremely difficult to, um, to, bring, to, in to bring in those, you know, yeah, those vehicles the from there. Yes. Um, the simple reason is that also custom officials are finding it difficult to track them. Right. Now, the closure of the land borders um, for people to import vehicles made them to have to 
you know, shipped the water, water waterways. waterways. Okay. So in a way, just like what I was trying to say is that in a way, it's also affecting the economy, <laughs> you know, the local economy. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, so how do we strike a balance? I think uh, the, mm. the the only way mm. we can actually strike a good balance is mm. if uh, both uh, the, the neighboring countries now, mm. uh, like we had the semi border uh, mm. at a the point there was a a commi uh, the, the president commissioned mm. a, a center point between both countries recently. Mm. So if that can be achieved in the other part of the country, mm. so that whatever economic activities it's it's being carried out there, mm -hmm. you know it's official, you know it's monitored. Both countries are going to benefit, benefit from rather it. Rather than the smugglers benefiting without the government of both countries mm -hmm. benefiting. Oh, okay. I think that would be a very strategic yeah. way mm -hmm. to ensure that it trickles down because yeah. once the government are involved, it means uh, legitimate... Perhaps they are sanitizing the, the, yes, the, the, the activities have access, for instance, that are taking place. Food vendors, for instance, mm -hmm. would have little care Mm. where they can sell and they yeah, the, it, government. the businesses will be, yes. will be properly organized, uh, organized in such yeah. a way that uh, government can also so monitor yes. what is going it's on there on, yeah. uh, because it, it's it's an issue you know people living around those borders yeah. will tell you that uh, the businesses it's have so collapsed well. and all of that okay thank <laughs> you very much gentlemen yes. i think it's about time we leave the stage um um it's been uh beyond the headlines and uh, with my colleagues here in the studio, uh, Tony Momodu and uh, Godwin Amunde, we were looking at the issues beyond the headlines. We were able to look at uh, some of the uh, major headlines of our national dailies, a uh, few of our national dailies that uh, we have at the moment. So we appreciate your contributions on the platform. It's a pleasure. Yes, Thank we you. also appreciate your um, continued, if you like, um, um, patronage or continued um, uh, investment of your time, I mean, to to our platforms, talking about Liberty Television and um, other platforms on the radio. Um, on this note, we have to come to the end of the program. Um, you do join us, uh, um, I think, next week when we come your way. And, but in the meantime, Kaduna will also have to uh, come up with the, the program, I think, uh, uh, sometimes on Thursday. So you um, keep watching as we leave you uh, on this uh, notes, uh, we appreciate your time. Good evening.